Now this is Hollywood Unlocked. What up, everybody? It's Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. I'm Jason Lee. Yo, it's DJ Damage. Let's get it started. All right, Melissa Ford is unfortunately not here, but Matt Barnes is. Hey. Substitute. I subbed in. No, not at all. Listen, you were one of the first guests we had here at Hollywood, Hollywood Unlocked when yeah. we didn't know what we were doing. I Crazy. start this gangster shit. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You y'all really did. Time now. Y'all are iHeart. Congratulations, man. Y'all doing it. No, thank you. But listen, it was funny because I, the story I always tell is we we didn't know what we were doing. We had had two shows. One show was just kind of, the first show was just the, the host. Mm-hmm. Second show was Lunell. Third show was Matt. And uh, Floyd called and said, why is everybody saying you're trending on Facebook? I go, I don't know what the fuck. What do you mean we're trending? He goes, you're trending. Uh, and so we looked and our interview was trending at the time. We had had that conversation. So you were the beginning of Crazy. me. Chasing the trending thing. Three years ago, right? Three, four About years three ago. Three years ago, yeah. Congrats, man. That's not too long ago. You guys are moving it though. Congrats. That's what's up. And then here you come out the blue with your own podcast, and now you're already <laughs> on television. It's taken us three years. <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, man, that shit was a. Uh, we caught lightning in a bottle. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, I didn't really know nothing about podcast. Uh, my partner and I was, you know, both working ESPN and Fox. We get a lot of positive feedback. Like you guys keep it real. Y'all need to do something together. Blah blah blah. So we was chilling at the house one day smoking. I'm like, let's let's do something. I don't know what, but let's do something. He's like, I'm down. And I'm on the production side and, and TV and, and docs, films, that kind of shit. So I kind of just started, you know, doing my homework, writing some shit down. And then I ended up being a guest on DeMarcus Cousins' uh, Showtime mm. <clears throat> doc. And uh, the producer's like, hey, I heard you want to do a, a podcast. I'm like, oh, yeah, kind of, I guess. He's like, you should meet with Showtime. Uh, long story short, we met with Showtime, no sizzle, no nothing, and now we're fucking records up. Wait, so the podcast <laughs> is, is called All the Smoke? All the Smoke. All the now, I haven't yeah. seen all the episodes yet, but is it like All the Smoke, like you guys are going in, or, because I just see, of course, the Kobe interview. Mm-hmm. You got the last interview with Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Um, is What is the temperature of the show? Uh, Just real. You know, I, I think my goal in every show is to humanize our guest. Um, you know, we've had... Hall of Fame basketball players. We've had mm. female uh, analysts. We've had Sean King. Um, you know, we've had a kind of a, a variety of guests. But to really, I really feel like the audience just wants to, wants to know what we're like off off camera, off the court, off the field, off whatever the fuck we're normally doing, and um, and just kind of be relatable. And I think that's where we really gravitated to is because we keep it real. And we're very relatable. No. Wait, so you're not even 40 yet. You're you're turning 40. I'll be 40 in like two weeks, bro. And you're already retired. Yeah, I retired at 37. But how crazy. But are, are you enjoying retirement? Do I you love miss- it. You know, to be, no, I don't miss basketball one bit. Um, I get my 14 fix. 14 seasons. What is yeah, it? 14, 16? 14, 14. Yeah, I, I get my f- basketball fixed by coaching the Twins, obviously. Uh, I really enjoy giving back and, and, and teaching kids and, and being a part of that. And then I commentate on it. I, I, I analyze it. But I don't miss it at all. I just, you know, I was wasn't supposed to be there. Got fourteen years. Got money. Got a got champ, a ring. Got a Why ring. Why you say about, you wasn't supposed to be there? Though? Just I was. I was the one. You know, I was. Just, I was the long shot. You know what I mean? I went to UCLA, obviously, and I went to in the number one recruiting class. But I was the mm-hmm. fifth highest recruit out of the five. Um, and then, you know, it took me a couple years to get my footing. But, you know, once I got my footing, I wasn't giving that shit back. So it, I could have. I, I outlasted a lot of lottery picks and number one picks and people who were better than me in college or high school. But just no one had more heart than me, and I think that's what that's got me my years. Makes the story sweeter. Right. So after you were on our show, you went up to the Bay Area and you were uh, with Golden State. Hey. Mm-hmm. And so how was that experience? Because it was kind of, um, <laughs> I mean, we missed you here in L.A., but clearly you went there and you won a ring. It was good. Uh, you know, being from Northern California, um, it was good. I, I kind of feel like even though it was my fourth season back in 2000, fourth or fifth season back in 2007, it was really the first year I got a chance to play, and that was with Golden State. Mm-hmm. And, and we made NBA history that year. So to kind of come full circle 10 years later um, and, and able to be a part of a championship team, man, that shit was dope. For a long time, Clay Thompson was the only person in the NBA I wanted to have sex with, but I never really had a chance to meet him. <laughs> that, shit, that shit came out. I was about to say, I thought you said you wanted to meet him before all the sex shows. Like, oh, I can't introduce you. But I mean, we were kind of sh- yeah. trying to figure out what he was no, going at. Yeah. We were talking about rings. I was thinking maybe oh, I could Oh, he's going to marry him? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> the last time I saw you was just in Chicago for All Star Weekend. Yeah. Uh, and everybody was there. Uh, oh, I saw you at the Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union Spades party. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of interesting seeing so many superstar basketball players. And I mean, I've never been in an All Star event like that uh, mm. it was cool you know d wade always has dope events uh he has little 
get togethers out here that are pretty solid too. But uh, you know, but I it don't... seems like all of you get along, no matter what teams you guys were on. You all, it seems like a. I think uh, it's all love. You yeah. know what I mean. And whether you have a de- direct relationship with D Wade or not, it, it it's always gonna you know definitely respect one of the mm-hmm. greatest players to ever to, to get down on that court. So. I don't even play spades. I just went out there to hang out. You know, we went out there to shoot the show. We got an amazing show that uh, that weekend with Kevin Garnett. And I was there for two days, and I bounced. It was – my light skin doesn't agree with that cold-ass weather. <laughs> no, it was it was three degrees. <laughs> Too much. How, how did you feel about the new setup of the All-Star game? I thought it was amazing. Uh, I gave my homeboy Chris Paul a, a huge shout-out because – That was different. It was just competitive, man, and I think that's what fans want to see. You know what I mean? I think making individual games – obviously, I think the, the beginning of the game started slow, but that fourth mm-hmm. quarter was – Incredible. Wait, 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 when you, when you say quarter. it's different for somebody like me or maybe people are listening, I have no clue about. I <laughs> so was courtside. Did, I yeah. know what the fuck was so going on. So they did something that they played like each quarter was an individual game. Normally it's four. Oh, I see. Okay. Normally oh, yeah. it's a full game, but they played like individual games, and then the last quarter they had to go up to a certain score. So it just really kept everybody in tuned and everyone competitive. So when that fourth final, fourth and final quarter came. Like you saw the best players, the best ten players because out they, there cause, hooping because they were playing for it to but like 157, 152 yeah, they points was or something like that. Like, yeah. Now the ending was we were sitting there like the okay, ending, the ending was weak. Yeah. To me, you got to change that. Maybe like if there's a tie, like the captains got to play one on one, like LeBron and 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 oh, should have played one on one. Yeah. You know, first yeah. one to three, the whole team wins the game or some shit. But yeah, it to can't me, end. you can't play that hard and then lose on a free throw. That shit right. Was weak. Should it be? Do you think they should change it to like win by two though? Uh, no, I, I just no. I just or think, think like that one on one. Yeah, if, if it's a you know if it ends up a tie or how would how was it? It was it was one fifty two to one fifty two. It was like yeah. if he like makes that. the one shot. Yeah, 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 next, yeah. yeah. So he won. They won by one. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but maybe a win by two. And or like I, I said, a one on one challenge real quick would have been that'd there. be crazy. And and what's his name? Um, what's the guy's name from Shark Tank? Mark uh, Cuban. Mark Cuban was sitting behind me screaming. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way this can end on a th- free throw no, line, and I did not been. know what was happening. Yeah, you were just there. I was just enjoying the free drinks. You were right there checking out the little shorts and shit. I will say this: I <laughs> checking out the little shorts. I'm, re- yeah. <laughs> I'm really mad. I've missed a whole generation of being able to really enjoy basketball. Like I now, now that I was there, I said to Tiffany, I said, "Yo, we got to come to every All Star uh, game." I'm glad I retired. <laughs> no, well, but- Matt, well, Matt, you know you you've been a uh, everybody no. loves Matt. I, we posted you one time. I, I don't know if it was last week or something. The comments that these people say on Hollywood Unlocked are so filthy. <laughs> They're pretty much the thoughts in my head. They t- yeah, they, they take after you, bro. They do. But you know, you're 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 a good looking guy. You know that. Yeah. I appreciate. And that, now man. an eligible bachelor. Very eligible. Wow. Okay, so uh, we're gonna get into that, man. Let me go back to All Star real quick. <laughs> so I was there, and I was able to finally meet. Uh, James Harden, who mm-hmm. I I don't know, but I I know like every time I see him, I feel like people see me and they just they don't they're not comfortable around me. But it was good to be in a relaxed setting where people can uh, you know have just a friendly conversation. But it was in, it was intriguing to see how everybody from different teams treated each other. It was a lot, like a country club kind of like well, everybody had a respect. Other. It's different now because I think back in the day, like used to be. Like enemies, you know what I mean? Because there was no social media. You worked out in your own city. Now L.A. is the mecca of basketball, so Mm -hmm. everybody has a summertime house here, and everybody's Mm -hmm. in the gym one day. It'll be LeBron. Next day, it'll be James. It'll be Paul George. It'll be Kawhi. Like, everyone is coming through here at some point, you know what I mean? So everyone is – you just see each other all the time, Mm -hmm. and it's crazy because I remember back in the beginning of my career, I used to think, like, man, I don't – Motherfucker, I don't fuck with him. But I didn't even know. Him. Mm-hmm. But then I'd end up playing with them or becoming teammates or playing to get in their cool as shit. You know what I mean? So a lot of I mean, there's some suckers out here, don't get me wrong, but most of the dudes are real, real cool. So like I said, when you end up linking up or seeing each other, now you're seeing each other all the time on social media. So it kind of makes the bond stronger. So everyone is just cool now. And that's what I feel like people love about the podcast, because that little behind the scenes, like, oh, I don't really fuck with this dude, what it's like playing against this dude. Like, we think about it when we're watching but y'all. you don't really know. But right. we have no idea right. who you had a tough time, you know, playing right. defense with and who get right. Like, that's the stuff that we like yeah. to hear. That's what makes the yeah. podcast yeah, so crazy. Yeah, I just think the, 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 the little details, you know, when Kobe was talking about his his battles and talks with Mike and KG was talking about his MJ shit yeah. and D-Wade has his stories and Steph has Wait, his did stories. Did Kobe say he had, like, a list? Like, he had a list that... A kill list. A kill list. At 13 of all the dudes who were ranked ahead of him. <laughs> But it was a hell of a list, though, because a lot of those dudes in, at 13, those same guys ended up playing in the NBA. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, man, we were blessed to be able to to have uh, Kobe's last interview, which was crazy. It's still, yeah, I'm still I wanted shocked. to ask you about that. How did that interview come about? Because I, I watched it, and to be able to, you know, go into his environment 
and have a very mm-hmm. intimate dialogue with him and it'd be the last conversation. Yeah. How did that come about? It's, I just think people had a huge misconception because we almost fought in 2010 and they thought like we didn't fuck with each other. But that shit, the ball fake in Orlando is what made us become brothers because yeah. uh, he had hit me up in free agency. I was talking to the Miami Heat. This is when LeBron was about to go there and they were about to get Bosch. And I was talking to, to D. Wade and Pat Riley and I was in Orlando at the time. So I'm like, shit, I'll just go to South Beach. Fuck it. But then out the blue, Kobe hits me, and I don't ever pick up numbers I don't know. I don't pick up numbers that I do know. You know what I mean? Some, <laughs> but for some reason, I picked this shit up, and it was Kobe. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, you know, you, you want to be a Laker? Anyone crazy enough to fuck with me is crazy enough to play with me. Come out to L.A. And I, I grew up a you know, I'm from California, so I grew up a Magic Johnson fan and shit. So I ended up coming out here, and we bonded instantly. And I think we bonded, too, off the court because we were both going through some stuff in our personal life at the mm-hmm. time. So we were really kicking it in, in, in the streets of L.A. and going to dinner and hanging out on road trips and really just became like it was crazy. Like through almost fighting, we became brothers. So we kept a very close connection <clears throat> after that. You know, once I came to the Lakers, he made my, you know, my sons feel like they're at home, man. Always, always had some shoes for him, always hugged him, always talked to him. And they're just like, you know, so they've known Uncle Kobe since like they're three years old. So just staying in contact and being cool. And then we, I would see him probably every other weekend because he was coaching Gigi and I coached the twins. So he would always make time to come to our games. He'd always send the boys team new shoes. He was just an incredible fucking dude, man. So seeing him at the event um, and seeing him at the basketball stuff, I was just like, yo, come on our podcast. He's like, no, I hope you guys are doing well. That's and crazy. he ended up coming on and, it, it it was his last interview and it but it was dope from the standpoint of reading the comments and listening to people like I've got to see the other side of code but I I was able to bring that wall down to yeah. let other people see that side of code that, that that people are haven't necessarily seen and see how deep he is how intelligent he is how in love with his and family he was too. very transparent very real and Kobe a f- was a real nigga. I just think he did some y- shit at a young age that kind of rubbed people the wrong way, but he was young. But yeah. that's where he was talking about the arrogance. And he was talking about, yeah. you know, how he's not arrogant in his personal life or yeah. he's very protective of family time, yeah. but then on the court, it's he's arrogant. But, but it's almost like you, you have to be an animal out a there. Great, oh, you have to, no question. His, his, his is more of a greatness to me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the audacity of you type shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that kind of arrogance. But just incredible player but the, the man off the court is you know who I really really fucked with and, and really became close to just to see his next passion in his phase and the way he still attacked business like he was still an athlete you know what I mean with that same kind of passion and yeah. desire and his ability to bring other great people together to work together you know like team concept and, and create an Emmy award-winning uh show and an Oscar and it was just crazy but then like I said like how passionate he was about his kids and how he loved how much Gigi played and how much he loved Vanessa to death and all the girls and we used to talk shit a lot because he had all girls and I so he had his two oldest girls I had my twins and then he got pregnant with um Bianca and I talked shit to him like man another girl and then I end up getting pregnant and having Ashton and then he gets pregnant with Capri and I was like damn another another boy for me and another girl for you and he put it I remember in <laughs> clear as day in capital A's like God has a sick sense of humor you know so he was he was cool, man. Uh, yeah, he was content with being a girl dad and, and just being an amazing just educator on life. Like I've, I've said, when I've talked to two people and I've just really sat down and talked to them, that I felt like I really learned something every mm-hmm. time I talked to them. It was Kobe and John Wooden, mm-hmm. the legendary UCLA coach. You know what I mean? Just like he was so intelligent and so integral about details and explaining shit. And it was just... We lost a real good man. I mean, I just feel like it's good to hear that side because, you know, me growing up being a basketball fan, you only heard Kobe's arrogant, Kobe's selfish, mm-hmm. Kobe don't like passing the ball. Yeah. And since he's passed, you know, it's good to see the the light and everybody speak about him the same way. Everybody right. has the same stories. The respect. Yeah, and I feel like a- it's just as a fan, it's good to see that because mm-hmm. growing up, a lot of us were just taught Kobe's so arrogant and Kobe's this and that. Yeah. And it's like, Well, I think damn. you saw like how he touched people and you know, obviously death brings a lot out of people mm-hmm. but you know when I saw what Michael Jordan did at the at oh the thing God. it was it, it, it made me cry but it just showed like he really touched a lot of different people in a lot of different ways and I have my own personal stories of how he just made me feel I get chills talking about it how he you know private workouts for my kids sending them shoes kicking or whatever but then to see those those same kind of stories from other people mm-hmm. you know what I mean the stories from Mike let's say this motherfuckers hit me up at 3am talking about basketball shit and it used to bother me but then I learned to appreciate it 
it's amazing just to hear what kind of dude he was, man, and, and, and to really just, you know, it brings a smile to my face, man, that, you know, he was able to open up, you know, because I used to fuck with him a lot on the team. Like, cause in the locker room with us, he was cool as fuck, talk shit. Could, you could talk shit to him, whatever. But the world would never see that side. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, oh, how come you don't show the world, you know? Why don't you show the world this side that not everybody can see this? You know well, what I mean? That's what I loved about the podcast interview, too, that you did, uh, All the Smoke. When you talked to him and you asked him, or one of your, I think your partner asked, like, what part of the shit people used to say about him bothered him? He said him? all of it. And he said all of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it really, that moment literally drew me back to the whole Gail King stuff. Yeah. And I feel like, like, you've had a past with stuff. I've had a past with stuff. I don't know about your past because it ain't out there yet, but it will be. <laughs> it's coming. And then Kobe's had his past, <laughs> right. but do you, but I feel like as a black man, when does when do we outshine our past? Like when uh, when do we get to a point where I just think when you learn from it and you continue to elevate, but when you elevate too much, they don't like that. So then that's when they when they want to bring up your past. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we've all everybody makes mistakes and everybody judging has made mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I think the fact that you know when you're on top. There's a lot of jealousy. But like to be that great and revered and respected and mm-hmm. perf- almost close to perfect in every way. And then for somebody to bring it up, did you feel what did you what were your thoughts? I was disgusted by it. I thought it was poorly timed. I thought, you know, it was she put her personal feelings in an interview. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I don't feel like that that was the, the time for it. If you want to ask a question, ask a question. Like I said, I think it was poorly timed. Um, overall, but you want to ask a question, ask it. But then don't say, don't say, well, you wouldn't see it because you're his. Fr-. You know what I mean? Like, don't. So, yeah, yeah, she was too invested in it. And like I said, the timing was terrible, and the way that they, her and and Oprah have kind of sought after these black men that have made mistakes, but they're jumping all over them. Mm-hmm. But then they have people in their own corners that are doing some other shit, and they kind of just let them slide. You well, know not, I mean? not only just black men accuse of shit, black men who have been accused but not even found guilty. True. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, so some people deserve some shit, but to me, you had 17 years to ask Kobe or, or talk to someone about mm-hmm. what Kobe did, and you chose to do it right after he died. And like I said, outside of her getting death threats, because I don't want anyone to get hurt out of it, I thought she deserved everything she got mm-hmm. to keep it real. You did know what I mean? Did you feel like uh, Snoop Dogg's comments was a little too far? Um, You got to understand where Snoop was coming from, a place of pain and hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And to see one of our own deliberately out there trying to bash someone that just just died you know so we're all hurting inside we were close Kobe and I were close Snoop and Kobe were close so we know how we feel imagine how Vanessa and her family feel and how Kobe's mom and dad feel and his sister feel mm. or like well, his like, kid's daughter who's right. still old enough to read it and online. like, I, like yeah, absolutely you know I just we just lost our son our my husband we just lost this shit and this is the kind of shit you want to bring up you know so it really bothered me the, the words he used to each his own, it is whatever, but I'm 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 fire out the mouth like that too. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it happened. Um, I, I think he did an interview where he, or before he did the interview with Red Table Talk, he kind of explained where he was coming from. And like I said, we were hurt. We, we were heartbroken. Like this Kobe shit is not going to stop hurting for a long time. And for her to come the way she came and then to really not, she didn't even apologize, man. Yeah, she blamed no. the network. Oh, yeah. they cut, like, to me, you're too fucking old to say you don't know what kind of shit goes on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Like, you've been doing this too long. You're a real life professional. Right. So to never even apologize. And then but that's almost the arrogance in it, right? Like I could just, I'm but you can because know, yeah. uh, well, it, it, it's the new social media wave. And I love that we can hold people accountable. Mm-hmm. You know, can you imagine like the move? If we can get it, if we can get a handful of snoops and other people to get that same kind of energy to go to the polls, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. we can change the motherfucking elections. If, if, if Snoop would have said boycott Gail, people would have boy, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. look, we have that power now. We've never had it. Before. I think there was a huge shift mm-hmm. in life when that shit happened. Like I said, it was unfortunate, you know, all is forgiven. You know, I still kind of have a little sigh at, a sigh at her, but I think she learned her lesson. But it showed, like, we're not, the, the, we're together. And you're not going to sit and choose and pick and choose to fuck, keep that same energy with everybody. And I think social media has given, you know, us that power now. Well, this is part of the conflict <clears throat> that I recently had with Kevin Hart, where I've had to bring him up several times and had to explain to him the perspective of black media at a different level than where you are now. You know, like, sometimes I think... People reach a certain level of success. I'll put Kevin in a bucket with Gail, Oprah, those people, black folks who forget the struggle, who forget that Kobe wasn't just a basketball player or an Oscar winner. He was somebody that I've talked to so many young black men all over the country, even online, who were like, I wanted to be him. Oh, yeah. no question. You know, so it's like you're not only attacking a, a person who's dead and not even buried yet, but you're attacking this kid's dream or this kid's our vision hero. of our hero. Yeah, hero. Our, our friend. 
our brother. I'm surprised. I was waiting for you to say something because you you are not. I said something. Like I said, but I think you, it was a little more PG rated because yeah. I think Snoop and Bootsy um, did what they had to do. <laughs> Took it home. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I still kind of said my piece a little more politically, but it was it, it was really how I felt. You know, to me, it, just keep that same energy because you got you both. You guys have people in your corner that have done some ill shit and been convicted of some ill shit. And mm. we still haven't seen no interviews of them or their friends mm. or anything like that. You know what I mean? So I'm not knocking because Oprah's done plenty for the community. I don't know what Gail's done, but. Oprah's done plenty for the for the black community, but to me, like you said, when you get to a certain amount where you make so much money, I don't know what that's like, but it's 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 probably it's possible to lose touch with what motherfuckers yeah. are really going through on a day to day basis. You know what I mean? So if you don't have that strong foundation to begin with, if you step off that slippery slope and you don't really have a strong foundation in this black community, they're gonna bury your ass now. Well, see, I know you personally, so I know how good of a parent you are and how much you love your son. So I'm gonna ask you two things. One. Where were you when you found out Kobe died, and how did you explain it to your kids? So we were, I have a house in the Bay Area, too, and I happened to just take my team up there on a road trip. So we were all staying at my house in the Bay playing in a tournament in, uh, in Oakland. So it was championship Sunday, and I was, the kids were playing all throughout the house and outside, and me and a couple of dads were downstairs watching TV, um, smoking. And all of a sudden, one dad jumps up. And he's like, nah, nah, you're playing, you're playing. Yeah. But he's talking to himself. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, nah, nah, he's, he's playing, he's playing. And so he tries, he's calling. I was like, what the fuck? He's like, Kobe, just, they said Kobe just died. And I like, froze. I'm like, what do you mean Kobe died? And he's like, no, Kobe's died, like my homeboy, but he doesn't play. Hold, hold on, I'm calling him. And he called him. And as soon as he got through to him, like it was, it was, it was out, it was real. And um, all the kids were up, like I said, upstairs playing. I froze. The dads went upstairs. I kind of came up there last. Um, and then I went on my balcony. I just laid there for like 45 minutes. Like I couldn't cry. I couldn't move. I couldn't do shit. And then I came back in the house and all the boys are watching the TV and, and the twins, the twins' eyes are watering up because like I said, they've known Cope since there was three. Mm -hmm. So I take the twins down in my room and talk to them and just to have them tell me how they feel and what's going on and what are they thinking and they start crying and we're crying together and um it was a fucked up day man but we uh i talked to them and i ended up talking to the, all, all the boys and their team you know our team decided that you know we're honoring kobe this year and we're not going to lose a game so we, we've lived up to we won three championships since scopes passed and we're 14 and 0 so I've kind of flipped it to them into using it as motivation and inspire mm. them to live the way Kobe lived and how to cheat because Kobe used to work the boys out and used to really work their ass. And I've seen it. I've seen a change in my boys. It's crazy as far as motivation goes since Kobe passed. Like they really want to get to basketball and they really want, you know, so it's, it's interesting seeing that. So I was, you know, like I said, I was in the Bay with my kids and, and the rest of my team. So it really hurt because, like I said, we had seen Kobe two weekends before at Mamba, and when Kobe's team would play, like they have to have that shit roped off, and everyone's playing. So I would always go there, <laughs> past the barriers, went over there, talked to him, and then you know saw Gigi and the girls, and then he saw that the boy, uh, and I had the twins come with me. He's like, no, tell the whole team to come, you know. So he had, I had the whole little team come over to the corner, and they all got this. So we had just seen Kobe maybe 10, 12 days before that shit happened. He had just sent his new shoes out with the little yellow on the side. Mm -hmm. Like the whole team was rocking the shoes. So we were in, you know what I mean? So it was just, it, it was a punch in the stomach, man. It, 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 it's, I still have a hard time believing it. Like I just want to believe so bad that he's just going to pop back up on us, but um, he's gone. What'd you think about TMZ breaking it before the family was notified? I'm just bothered by, and now that I'm a part of the media, like it's yeah, yeah, you know what it's I mean. A weird, but, uh, it's a it's, weird. It's a because to me that because there's just morals and there's rule like unspoken rules. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like just just shit you shouldn't do. And 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 uh, too often it's about being first and not right. You know what I mean? So you're seeing TMZ rush it out without clearing it from anyone, and then you're seeing other ABC reported that Ray Fox had yeah, died. Come or, on, yeah, man. That's, like that's I said, nice. you don't know what the fuck you're. You're just trying to say something. You want to be out. In, 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 and it's just the way it's going to be. I don't think it's going to change because there's no accountability. Like no one, well, you said ABC said that. Nothing mm -hmm. happened to ABC for saying that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nothing happened to TMZ for doing the punk shit they did. So it's just like, it is what it is. And it's, just, it's fucked up because there's like no ethics. Mm -hmm. There's no morals. There's no, you're not held to a standard and you're not punished for 
yeah. saying the wrong shit and lying and doing shit you shouldn't be doing. So it's it's kind of just a mess right now. So it really bothered me because, like I said, I know how I felt and I was devastated, but I can't imagine how the fucking family felt. And, and then they have to find out on social media instead of yeah. having, you know what I mean, like the proper way to find out. So it's a dirty game, man. Did you go to the memorial? I couldn't. It was too much. I couldn't, man. Did you watch I, it? I watched the whole entire Wasn't thing. Wasn't it? It was inspirational but depressing. It was amazing. It was it was, it was, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful celebration. Um, everyone who got up and spoke was amazing. The one thing that bothers me because I know his, I, I know just, where, I, know I, where I, ready I to seen go. his mom and dad this summer. We went to the house and he they met Ashton and I know his sister Shea and I know Sharia. So what bothered me was okay. They don't talk, okay, but nobody recognized them, and they were sitting right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's almost like the first seventeen years of his life didn't matter, and like that shit really hurt me. Like I, I, you know, I get weak talking about it right now because obviously, you know, Vanessa is one of the strongest women on the planet, and I have nothing but love for her and and the girls and the family. But his mom and dad lost a son, and his sisters lost a brother, and just like nobody. Recognized well, they weren't even that. acknowledged. Or they weren't. Didn't speak it, or they were on the camera. The camera hit them a couple of times, but nobody addressed them. Nobody, like, or at least on camera. Hope, I'm sure off you camera, some people. As seen, far as but, the people that were speaking, yeah, nobody. Uh, and, and, like they did, they didn't get a chance to speak. There was just no recognition. I'll be honest, of I didn't his even family. know who they were. Right, like they, they they didn't put their name at the bottom. I just that was the only thing that kind of hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? And I hope it was just an accident. Um, but it really hurt. But outside of that, it was a absolutely beautiful but sad situation. Well, well, so, well I talked to somebody close <clears throat> to them and to Vanessa and to Kobe, and they said basically that um, Vanessa didn't really have a relationship with with his parents, oh, okay. but that Kobe mm -hmm. loved his parents yeah. and loved his sisters. I, I don't know that they used to go yeah. to the game. I guess the sisters used to go to the game. Yeah, That's I mean, I don't. Yeah. You know, the, the family dynamic is something I'm yeah. going to completely stay out of. But it just, you know, like to me, it just, it, that was the one thing. It was weird. Like it, I, I I noticed it during, and I'm to keep thinking, okay, well, maybe Joe's going to talk at the end. Okay, well, maybe Joe's Pam, the father. Joe's the dad. And maybe Pam, the mom, maybe Pam's going to say something at the end. Okay, well, maybe someone's going to say, you know, condolences to them. And, and, and like nobody did. No. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying it's anybody's yeah. fault. But like to me, it's just like knowing them, like really knowing the family too. And I'm just like, fuck. Now, am I tripping? I remember growing up, there was a story where his parents were trying to sell his memorabilia or something like that. I don't know if that was true or not. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't know what's true, what's not true, who got along, who got, who didn't get along. But you know, it's just, it's. It but was, I've been, I've been open about like when my mom died. She did a lot of things to me too. But like, at, that's a moment where you I mean, kind of got to put everything aside and yeah. say, still they child. This, this is my kid. You yeah. know, so that mm -hmm. was something that. You know, fans recognize that really quickly. I did didn't, they? Oh, yeah, see, oh, I we, didn't... we wrote a story about it today. Oh, did you? The fans are going crazy about uh -huh. it, yeah. Yeah, like I said, I don't know if it's anyone don't want to start, or don't know if it's any, I'm not saying it was someone's fault, like, but just to me, I just thought that, you know, I, everyone was just probably wrapped up in the moment. You know what I mean? But to me, even like when I watched on ESPN, like they didn't even put like the Bryant family. In no, I, like, I didn't know who they, they were. They showed them a handful of times, but like to me, Maybe they I, didn't even know. Let me tell you how I found out. Let me tell you how I found out. I went in the chat group with my staff and I said, Kobe's parents are notably absent, so mm. like we need to figure this out. And and Alyssa, I think she no, they she were sent right a picture there. of them saying they were there. They were right and I'm there. like, wow, I kept seeing them flash right, them, but they yeah. didn't say anything. So yeah, but really, just I mean, to get back to Vanessa was so amazing out there, man. Yeah. To be able to, to 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 be as strong as she was and and have to grieve and not only lose your husband but lose your baby girl too, and, and to have the courage and strength to still do what she did man she was she was amazing out there and, and like i said the personal story she told about kobe and Gigi were so heartfelt and and amazing so you know i just everyone keep the whole whole brand yeah. uh bryant family in their prayers from vanessa and the girls to the mom and dad to the sisters because i like i said i couldn't imagine the, the world lost a superhero um, but they lost a family member. Yeah, I didn't even know that him and Magic Johnson were, I mean, uh, Michael Jordan were as close. Yeah. And Michael Jordan's speech had me, like, I, oh, yesterday, man. I'm going to tell you, I threw yesterday MJ, away. Man. Or, yeah, yesterday, yeah. yesterday was the day the memorial happened when this mm -hmm. airs, but I watched it and I literally said, I'm taking today completely off. I, I didn't I know hurt. how to function. I was hurt. Was part that, of, part I, of me in watching Michael Jordan uh, cry, cry, was you could tell he was speaking completely oh, from, the, from heart. the heart. Yeah, and we yeah, don't, yeah. And we don't get that from Mike. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Mike is the one... 
man, I don't even know how to put it because to me, he's the greatest. He's this, this, and that. But he's just so detached he's from so culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and, and you got to respect that. You know what I mean? Like when you get to a certain level, you got to respect. Man, that's my fucking Michael Jordan. That's Kobe. You got to respect whatever way they move. But at the same time, I just I made a post about it yesterday. I really felt we needed that. Like I needed to know Mike fucked with Kobe yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Because Kobe talked about it on in our interview how he and Mike talked a lot and how competitive they were and all that kind of stuff. So to see that kind of raw emotion from Mike, Mike, that shit, we needed that, Mike. Mike, we love you. We appreciate it. And I was telling my homies in my UCLA like, group chat, like, don't be surprised if Mike is more, out more now, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, in mm -hmm. honor of Kobe, because he mentioned it, you know what I mean, how proud he was and how Kobe is one of those rare superstars that really tried to give back. Like, some superstars just give back to other up-and-coming stars. Like, Kobe fucked with everybody, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? At his Mamba Academy, you would have Aaron Donald and superstar baseball players and NBA stars and football players all coming to just get a little bit, little bits of the, them isms. You know what I mean? So Kobe is one of those rare people. And I think hopefully that continues to inspire everyone. And, and, and maybe it'll inspire Mike to just kind of come out and, and, and be more for us because we fucking love Mike. We yeah, just, we need Mike more. Mike Mike is just behind the scenes. We know he had a party in Chicago during um, All Star. Yeah. I didn't go though, but he was out. I mean, he's taking pictures of everybody, but yeah. I know what you mean. But you know, just kind of out there, more kind of being a voice for, you yeah. know what I mean? Because it's a, he's a, he came from a different generation. You know what I mean? Like, I would love to know that like Michael Jordan's voice was an influence on what culture is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because he's so re relevant still with his fucking shoes and yeah. all the shit that's going on with his shoes and um, the other stuff he's doing. So I just wish, you know, but like I said, to each his own, I respect what he's doing, but I would just say as a fan of his and, and someone in the culture, like we would love to just see more of Mike. Yeah. I, I do think though, he did share exactly what everybody needed to yeah. hear from somebody who was that close. And it was also good to see that sense of emotion. I mean, I thought Shaq did a great job. Alicia Everybody Keys did, did it. I mean, it was it was, it was perfect. Yeah. yeah, it was perfect. It was a, a little awkward for me, and maybe I don't know the history. White Mamba taking a shot at LeBron was that? Was that I don't even think it was a shot. Like, was it a joke? I thought yeah, it was, was a, a joke. joke. Yeah, it was a joke. She's not a comedian. Yeah, yeah, it came off. It was just like, wait, was she? You know, she wasn't taking a shot. It was a joke. Okay, you know what I mean, but it to really, it was just speaking. It was, just to, a... it was speaking to how talented Gigi is. You know, like LeBron is thirty five and he doesn't have it all the way down yet. Gigi was. <laughs> 12 and 13 with this this Kobe or you know MJ move so I think it was more just a credit to how okay, yeah, talented like, Gigi wait, was it seemed like it was it's like a few people laughed I was watching on TV but it's like nah this, it, like, it, this, it wasn't a sneak dish. she kind of looked over like yeah, just yeah. some lighthearted well, humor but here's the gag I <laughs> sat next to her at the all-star game I didn't know who she was Oh, she's because I was trying to get the waiter and she was taking up the waiter's attention so I'm like who is this girl but apparently she's a good basketball she's player she's one right? of the best ever yeah. I didn't know people <laughs> um no so uh yeah i thought it was uh so you had talked about on the podcast where you took kobe to the club <laughs> now this is what i don't get now now this is you know i know you off the microphone or behind the camera so right. i know who you are you're pretty much who you show yourself that's right. who you are who you are in front of the camera off the camera yeah now person. when he's off the camera is he fun like because i always yeah, saw him just as a brand super cool man so, but i used to be on his ass about that you mm -hmm. know what i mean because to me like was that a way of keeping him like grounded and no nah, because he's not to me he's not arrogant like you can't talk to me you can't because like i said you could i used to go at Kobe, talk hella shit to Kobe, and he would talk it back. He Other people would talk, so it wasn't like that. But to me, it was just, I just wanted to loosen him up. Like, I could just tell, like, like loosen up. Like, let me shake your motherfucking ass real quick. Like, <laughs> really you know, shake loosen physically. up. Like, because me, because, like, we always got to see how dope he was and how cool he was and how funny he was and then how serious he was when he needed to be serious. Like, we saw all shades of him. So, like I said, we connected. I don't even know how the fuck we ended up. We're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, Steven Jackson is out there, but he's hurt. So I'm just like, man, what the fuck's going on? It's freezing, it's snowing. So I'm in my room smoking. So I hear Cove up, <laughs> fucking around, like, you want to come down to smoke with me? Nah, nah, nah. He's like, nah. Hey, you know, but like, what you doing? I'm like, shit, Steven Jackson's about to go to this spot, like, right behind the hotel. He's like, I'm in. I'm like, what? You want to you go to a club out here? He's like, yeah, I'm in. I'm like, fuck it, all right. So we walked out the back of the hotel to the alley, and it was me, Cove, and, and, and Jack in this little VIP area in, in a club in, in Milwaukee. <laughs> it was just Were people weird. surprised when y'all walked in? Probably not in me, but the motherfucking see Cove like, <laughs> it's, it's like, Cove. like so. And we were roped off, and it was like on this stage was really well lit, so everyone was just fucking staring the whole time. But you know that was Milwaukee. But like I said, we were going through some shit the same time when I first came here, so we were out in the in these these streets, you know, just hanging out and having mm. a good time and like I said, really bonding as brothers and 
you know, he he's kind of the one who put me on to celebrity ch chicks because he was the one, like, he was taking me to the, these black tie events and we were meeting all these actresses. And, like, once you let me in the door, that's all. Like, you ain't got to say a motherfucking word. Like, I'm, let me in. I'm going yeah, to do what I do. So, Cole was the one that kind of put me on um, Hollywood Girls. But Real do you talk. prefer the Hollywood girls over just the regular girls now? Um, I've met a few really solid, solid Hollywood chicks. But like to me, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not as as much as I'm, I'm in the media and in the blogs. I really try not to be. It's mostly just because I have a slick ass mouth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but I really prefer to stay private. You know what I mean? So, it to me, it doesn't matter who you are or what you do. It just I got to be able to vibe with you. Mm -hmm. That's it. But do you feel like maybe like a celebrity woman has a lot more to keep private so you can trust a lot more? To lose. There's, yeah, like, there's something to lose. Hey. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. There's something to lose. Definitely. So you, you, you always want to keep that in mind because you just never know, man. You just never know. So you pop out the blue with the whole kid in relationship. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? Like, well, yeah. where? Why did I not know this? Why did? Because I just tried to stay out the way. To be honest with you, man. To be like, uh, you know, my, my and every, Beverly Johnson, the legend, her daughter. Okay, right. so you, you, I text hey. you one day because I try to be in your business as much as possible, but as a friend <laughs> away. Uh -huh. But I'm like, okay, wait, congratulations. But when, when did this happen? Like, did you guys both decide to just keep it low? I just tried to be low. To be honest with you, like I said, I was just trying to stay out the way. You know what I mean? I think my first break up with my twin's mom was so public and nasty and yeah. people had to choose sides like that's the last thing I wanted to happen on this time you know what I mean so um but we stayed low you know we went to college together and then re and re met or not met but saw each other at all-star and just hit it off and we're with each other hang, hung out every single day after that um irresponsible and had unprotected sex and and, and got pregnant and um you know, I had a discussion about that, but then chose to have a baby, which I'm so happy about right now because mm -hmm. I get to start all over. But just the, the the situation didn't work. You know, I just wasn't I wasn't happy. You know what I mean? And and so, like, we broke up like at the end of December, and it didn't really hit until the like the end of towards the end of January. But I was just, you know, like I said, I really didn't want to ruffle the feathers. You know what I mean? I had been in the media plenty of times for relationships, and everyone's saying, well, damn, you can't keep a girl. And, 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 like you can, and I just realized I'm at the point now where, like, it's fucked up because in both the situations, I just wasn't happy, so I chose to leave. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But a lot of shit came with that when I chose to leave both situations now. So I'm hoping that... This next situation is just, you know, emotions and feelings and everything will calm down and, um, you know, we can get back to a regular schedule with our son and just be friends. You know what I mean? I think after six years, me and Glory are, are, are as cool as we've been, mm. which is great. And then, like, I would love to have that with this. Like I said, just because we didn't work doesn't mean we have to be enemies. Well, let me ask this question and I'm going to ask it as sensitively as I can because I know how much no you... No such thing. No, because I know how much you love your children. Love my children. You're, you're a great father. Mm -hmm. And I know you love the child that you have with Ananta, mm -hmm. Ananta mm -hmm. but did you, did, when you said you had the conversation, was it the conversation about not keeping the kid? Uh, we discussed like where we were at, you know what I mean, like in, in life, and it was fast and it was new. And, mm -hmm. you know, with Gloria, everything was fast and new. You know what I mean? The twins came along quick with her too, you know what I mean? But I just think we both understood that, you know, we got to be responsible. Like we were both irresponsible. And when you're irresponsible, stuff like this happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was I was more on the side of this is fast. Are you, is this the right move for us? You know, our relationship is new. And then, you know, her being a loving mom, like it'll work. It'll work. You so know, she had other like, kids. She has, yeah, she had uh, three kids from mm -hmm. her previous marriage. So like I said, amazing woman. Uh, the most supportive woman I've ever been with, mm. uh, you know, love her. It just wasn't for me. The situation wasn't for me. You uh, know what I, I mean? And it's and, and and like I said, I just hope we'll, we'll get to a point where we can just co-parent and, and, and really be able to do everything for Ashton. Absolutely. What, what, what do you say would make you happy in a relationship? Like, what are oh, those that's things? That's a question. That's a great... Cause I, I, it's, we live in such a crazy world. Yeah, like everybody's definitely going to have to be a freak because he... <laughs> I mean, every, everybody fights for love, but then once we get it, then what? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I think like in anything else we're passionate about, whether it's this show or my show or basketball, like we work our fucking asses off to be good at that. Mm -hmm. But we don't put that same energy in relationships. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so you get in what you put out of it. So to answer your question, well, I, I don't know. You feel like, like you don't know yet? I, I, don't, I, I don't know if, you know, this relationship is really, shit is really 
I was going to say, why don't you practice the whole polyamorous thing? That's multiple relationships. Hold on. He knows how to juggle. He he, (laughs) he could be in a circus if if circus was hiring. (laughs) Motherfucker could juggle. I mean, because you you we you very transparent. You you're good with kids. I'm very transparent. You know what I mean. You're, you're sometimes good sexually. You're, sexually, you're great in bed, from what I've heard. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's plugging me right and now. You do all the things that a man is supposed to do to a woman, and that's amazing. So <laughs> why not try to have like he's a to put this on everybody a group thing a group. Thing. I ain't got too personal because my friend. I can't. Do I've that. always been scared to do that because I just don't. The Me Too shit scares the shit out of me. You know what I mean? I, uh, I was talking, I don't know who I was talking with, but I've only had like one threesome my whole life and it was when I was like 21. Like I just, I'm too scared to, of, of a girl to say something. Mm-hmm. And then with my reputation, I'm guilty before yeah, that's true. Yeah, they bro. say anything. You know what I mean? So to me, it's like even with single, whatever, like I'm just cool with chicks. You know what I mean? Like when we kick it, it's not sex all the time. You know what I mean? We just talk, chop it up, talk, watch a movie, whatever, take that, whatever. So it's just like, I want to make sure that like we're cool. So if, if sh- it never happens, has to even get to that place like i stopped having one night stands a long time ago that shit mm-hmm. is too risky like so, i just think yeah. you got to be really careful these days because we have targets on our back and it's just a different time now but do you see yourself getting married like married and you know walking down the altar and having the whole you know do you see yourself doing that no i see myself with a big ass bed and a bunch of niggas that don't speak english <laughs> But that's just me <laughs> I, I just I, yeah. i've been exposed to polyamory so i just yeah. feel like I don't know. But I feel like if you don't like one relationship, having multiple doesn't sound like the better option. Everybody, relationship. Everybody can but fill I just, a different like, need. Like, I, I, like the way I, do you really feel like we're meant to just be with one person? No. Like, and I, 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 I feel like feel we're that way. And I feel like when you're like you, uh, uh, rich, successful, famous, you're you're guilted into having the perfect family. Like you, yeah. have, to have, you have to have the perfect wife. The perfect kids got to be dressed. Per- you already got perfect kids. They already dress cute. You already active in their lives. You're well, that's per- what I try, try to do with this last situation. And, it, and like I said, I, I it just and I will say wasn't. you did really you really made an effort. I took a family picture and they're like, when have you ever seen me in a family picture? Really and I post I posted her like it was just you know like I said it just it 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 just. You know, but at do you the end like, of the day, do you feel like you were being you though? Like, do you feel like I was being me, but at the same time, I kind of felt still not compromised. But it was, pressure. it wasn't, it wasn't even pressure. It was just like I just wasn't comfortable all the time. You know what I mean? And I just think like as much shit as I've been through, and as much money as I've lost in court battles, and to my exes, and as much as I've been dragged through the mud and everything. Like to me, I'm to a point. I'm not. I'm selfish, but not I'm, I'm not hard headed selfish. But to me, like you got to fit in my game plan on my path and and go with that, or it's not going to work. So she posted something and she said, "When a toxic person can no longer control <laughs> you, they will try to control how others see you. The misinformation will feel unfair, but stay above it." Yeah, what is, she's calling you toxic. I I guess you know what I mean. I guess, and I wasn't by by any means perfect, but I was. I'm, I'm not. A bad person like i said i i'm very transparent almost to a fault you yeah. know what i mean so i'm gonna keep it too real with you mm-hmm. you know what i mean and like i said it was the the the, the situation was just not a situation that was that, that was comparable for me and my twins anymore so i just you know decided to make a, a move off it you know what i mean and then i'm reading well you can't keep a woman you must be a problem or you're gay or you're this and you're that well, i can tell and you just i like, can tell you as the uh general of the gay community the he ain't gay because if he was, <laughs> he ladies and gentlemen, the general. Nigga we, called himself the general. <laughs> we had kidnapped him a long time ago. <laughs> no, nah, you know, but it's it, it's tough because like once again, and, and I realized I kind of made a mistake because I was low p pe- low key being calculated petty when I posted a picture because I hadn't seen my son in, in shit. It's been it's been thirteen, fourteen days, but mm. um, you know, but you know, a restraining order was issued to me and I can't get in too much detail, but it's just like... Well, somebody sent us some receipts today. Know. I don't know who sent us these receipts because right. they're an- anonymous accounts, but yeah. you do you were approved uh, visit a uh, uh, code. But okay. see, I didn't even, I, I didn't even look. I, that was all the way inside the paperwork that I didn't even look at. But to me, I'm just like, what is this for to begin with? Like, what do you, what, yeah. what, what, am, what is Why someone getting... coming, what is someone coming up to my kids' basketball practice and hand me this paper for when I really didn't do shit to deserve that? Like yeah. I said, I'm not, I'm not perfect by any means. I'm not crying wolf. Like for me, fuck that because I could take anything that comes to me straight up. But like, I didn't do nothing to deserve this paperwork. Well, so that you, really if you, bothers if you, me. If you left her, don't you think it's a way of kind of using it's a it's a tool to vilify you in the press, don't you yeah, think? Uh, yeah, because I mean, you know, the, and, and, it, and, it, and it happened before. You know what I mean? So now both girls are sitting. It's just like these it's situations. A, like 
if I'm not like, why does it make me a bad guy if I just if I'm not happy and I want to put my if I'm always I've always looked out for my family, for my friends. I've looked out for everybody and I've always put my shit on the back burner. But I'm like, I'm coming up on 40. My man Cole passed, Nip passed last year. Like this shit is not promised. So it just kind of made me start thinking like, are you really, really happy right now? Yeah. I'm happy in parts. So are you all the way happy? OK, if you're not like what's going to make you all the way happy? And now I'm all the way happy. Mm -hmm. I'm all the way happy. Like my career after basketball is blown the fuck up. Like I never would have thought I was going to be able to do the shit I'm doing after basketball. My twins are happy. I have a beautiful little boy. Like I said, we're going to work all that shit out. So I'm, we're going to co-parent. But like I'm really happy right now. And I shouldn't be like, oh, you're a fucking broad. Like, no, I just wasn't fucking happy. So I, I left. Uh, you know, this happens to all of us. All Straight of us. But like I said, my shit is just out there. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mine's so all the guys and, watching this right now, I'm like... Bro, we've been there, yeah. especially after the baby's you know just I mean? born. And, and it's like, hard. It's hard. You know, it's hard to, to, to get up and especially like we were a family. We were a family of what the fuck, eight. Like this is a big family. You yeah. know what I mean? So we it, so it's hard. There's kids involved and yeah. there's stuff. But like at the end of the day, like this shit is not promised. So to me, I want to be happy every single day. Mm. You know what I mean? Facts. And I, it just it, not that I wasn't happy, but I was just uncomfortable sometimes. And I, did, <clears throat> I didn't want that shit. You know, so it was just like I didn't want to feel uncomfortable. So I'm just in a place now where, you know, it's it, it's me and my sons, and we're happy as fuck. And we, you know, we hang out with little Ash, and and we're we have a blast, and we do stuff together. And and that's just where I'm at right now. So it's my kids and business right now, really. Yeah. When you say you feel uncomfortable, do you feel like it's something triggering you from the past, like that uncomfortable feeling is like something you felt before? Uh, I don't know. You know, what I mean, like people ask, like. Am I stained from my first relationship? Will that keep me from ever? Because Gloria was like really my first like real, real relationship. Mm -hmm. And obviously my first and only marriage. So like, does that stain you? And obviously you live and you learn from situations and shit was hurt. And, you know, even though I left that situation, I was heartbroken for a long time because, yeah. you know, I've known G since we were, you know, kids. And then we had kids together and it was like our first, it was like my first real run at something. So like I said, even though I chose to step away, like it was hard. You know what I mean? I so feeling. it's just, it's it's a crazy dynamic man but like you said you live and you learn there's no like i wasn't really taught love as a child like you know my parents you know used functioning drug addicts used drugs my mom was very loving but my dad wasn't so i from a man's standpoint like there's a lot of shit i probably didn't learn you know as far as how a man is supposed to love and do this and do that so i'm learning all this motherfucking shit on the fly so all i know is regardless whatever you do be the best dad mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. what i focus on the absolute most with any relationship i've ever been in like being the best dad is number one to me. You know, my spouse came second, and that's just keeping it real. So that's all I ever really knew is to be super dad. But I think at the same time, I wasn't being like a super partner. You know what I mean? So like I said, I don't blame Gloria. I don't blame my last. If they want to blame me, it's whatever. Because I'm still trying to figure out this shit called life out. You know what I mean? In this relationships and being a dad and being responsible. Like, it's it's this, there's no book to this shit. So, you know, we're learning on the fly with no solid foundation to begin oh, with. Well. well, one thing I will say, at least on the outside, because I didn't even know you were in a relationship, a uh, committed relationship <laughs> or a kid or none, none of that. It, I, But I was kind of watching it, you know, from a distance, you know, with one eye, you know, closed. But uh, it did, you, you were making an effort, you know, and I, I feel I tried like hard, that's man. really all you can do. All and you if can shit do. don't work out, it don't it work out. It doesn't, you know what I mean? But she's, it's, she's, she's spite in there, man. There is. It's it, spiteful. It, it, I was talking to my man, it's just like, like I really, and not that I'm even, like I said, because I'm, I'm who, I was a motherfucking role player in the NBA for 14 years. Now my post career is popping, but I know who I am and where I fit in this whole ecosystem. So I can imagine how someone who elevates a superstar acts, but like you can't break up and just go your separate race mm -mm. anymore. Like mm -mm. it has has to be someone's gonna get in their ear a mom or a family mm -hmm. member is gonna get in their ear and it's and it's gonna become well, fuck this motherfucker he probably did this this and that to you and, and, it, and it's crazy mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's just it kind of is what it is the, the the storm will be weathered and luckily there's 24 hour news cycles where someone else says bullshit is gonna come up <laughs> and it's gonna take the way of my bullshit but you know like i said I, like my whole thing is like i just I can't go through another six years of, of, of being like at war with the mother of my children. Like that so shit is draining, mentally bro. draining, financially draining. It's just draining. You know what I mean? And, and, and like I said, I'm finally in a good place with the first ex and, uh, you know, I, I, I'll get there with this ex. Did you mean, what is your relationship with, um, Derek Fisher? Me and Derek are cool. You guys are cool. You know, we got into it and, and we got into it. And then, uh, I seen him one day cause there's, you know, they're still together. And uh, so I would see him and I coached. And since I retired, I coached my boys in football and basketball. So I would see him 
like at games, but he wouldn't make eye contact or he would leave when I would come in. And it was all the kind of, it's just like this awkward ass energy. And before the movie pulled, like we were cool. He was a stand up dude. So I just got to the point and it was in the boy, the twins were telling me too, like, daddy, you should be friends with Derek. Like we really like him. He's like, nah. It's like, he's good to you guys. And that, to me, that's because I was, I was over the relationship with her. So to me, the next most important thing is like, is he good to my kids? Well, when you were here, I remember what drove you crazy was you found out from them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah don't do me. Don't do me <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Don't do me like that. You know what I mean? Like tell me like a man. So like, that's what it says. So it was after a football game one day, and all the family and kids were walking, and we're walking towards the car, and I look back, and Derek is like a half a basketball court behind us, and I'm just like, this is kind of awkward. So I just kind of I walk back, and I know Glory because I was actually talking to Glory at the time, and I uh, I know she's probably like, oh, what the fuck, what's he about to do? <laughs> so I just pulled him to the side and just told him what happened to you know just the reason why I did what I did. You know, it's like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have liked that you moved on with my ex, but I would have respected it if you would have came to me as a man. And then I took it so deep as like because I was still playing at the time, like you're going to be around my kids more than I am. So like, we got to work at this shit together. You know what I mean? So you got to be the male figure in their life and you got to discipline them and teach them shit and everything. Cause like I said, I wasn't, I was over the relationship with her. So to me, like, I'd much rather who move on with him than like some fucking rapper or some other yeah. motherfucker that's not going to treat my kids the right way. Because you know Derek's you know? character overall. That's what I'm saying. I know outside the movie pool, he's a good dude. So to me, like I said, if I'm over glory, like there should be no grudge. Like we got it in. Whatever happened, happened. So I'm to the point now where it's just about what's best for the kids and it hopefully make Gloria happy so we don't have to so but we don't butt heads. But that's the growth that nobody sees. Matt. Well, they don't they don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see they that. Don't see that. They don't want to see that. They, they want me to fight everybody. They want me to be who I've showed them I can be at sometimes, but it's just not me. Like I said, I just had a, like, a lot of real... Like, you got to think about like that shit, like a homie dating an ex or an ex, like people have been killed for shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People and it's not get killed just for your, a lot like less. Like just your ex, like this is right, a girlfriend. Right, some of my kids, yeah, you know what I mean? Somebody you've like, been so with me. for years. But even like I said before with all that, like to me it wasn't even so much about, you can't help who you fall in love with. I wanted her to be, I want her to be happy. I still do to move on, whatever. But to me it's just like, you can't be around my kids knowing how much I love my kids and just not tell me about it. But it also it. speaks to how well you've raised your kids if they're mature enough to have that conversation. Like, hey, dad, <laughs> hey, come daddy. on, be cool with Derek. <laughs> Straight I mean, up. You know, yeah. Right, because they know they can come to me with that. And, and that was really the main reason why. Because I used to, you know, you know me, I was just like, you know, how's everything? Oh, he's great. He's this, he's that. And they're always like so excited about him. They're like, you guys need to be friends again. I, I think you would like this, Derek. I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? So that was really my <laughs> driving reason behind let's just squash it because at the end of the day, it's about raising Isaiah and Carter and, and having two positive male role models and their uh, influences and role models in their life to just teach them. You know what I mean? So like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that her and I are at a place where it could just be cool now. It doesn't have to be awkward. It doesn't have to be stuffy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be nothing but just... And she looks happy. She, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I think they're getting married soon or this summer or something. Oh, wow. So like I said, I wish them the absolute best. Uh, like I said, her and I are at peace. The boys love him to death and that's just my most, to me, like, are my kids happy? Then I'm happy. So what are you the most proud of? I mean, you won the ring since you've been here. You have three kids now, all of which seem to be being raised mm -hmm. in an amazing way. Mm -hmm. at, you, at 39, which is still hella young, looking back, what are you the most proud of? My kids, mm -hmm. hands down. That's the best part of, uh, of any of this shit. Um, you know, it was it, it was a dream, like I said at the beginning of the interview, I wasn't supposed to play in the NBA. So it was a dream to be able to play 14 years in the NBA. And to me, I, I used it as just an opportunity to meet a lot of people now that I'm just connecting dots with in post, my post career as far as business goes. I've always had just a business mindset. You know what I mean? Like I knew business was going to be in my future. I didn't know what the fuck business I was going to do, but it was mm -hmm. going to be in my future. So I used my career as that platform. And then just the way it's blown up post career, you know what I mean? Obviously the podcast is doing what it does and, and shout out Showtime because I didn't know what the fuck a podcast was until I started talking on one and it, it's been crazy. And then, you know, to be able to work for the Disney family and ESPN and host shows for Complex and work for Fox and the having... You have hair care products too, though, right? I have a hair care line called Hue that's in uh, Target. Jason's you know, I have been using it. Fresh, fresh. I'm not yet, but I could. <laughs> yeah, you need to talk shit about yourself. It's Wait, perfect. listen. listen here. Well, I'm surprised you're not in weed, though. Like I am in weed. Okay, I was going to say. No, because the yeah. first time I went to Matt's house, I, mean, I go up to, to the roof and he's sitting there and we're having the, I forgot what we were having the conversation with and who I was there, but he pulled out, the, this literally still the biggest bag of weed I think I've ever seen yeah. in, in LA. It was the biggest, hugest bag of weed. So I'm, I, I would assume you'd be in the business. Yeah, I'm in it. You know, I'm a part owner of a company called Seven Leaves up in Sacramento in my hometown. Um, where we grow all our weed, we'll have about a thousand lights for any people yeah, kind of in actually, the space to know about it. He actually passed me a joint at a party. I was like, "Oh, thanks, man!" <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was handing them <laughs> this all is you? out. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we got that. 
And then I'm actually launching my own particular line called Swish. This is my sweatshirt. Hey. Um, oh, nice. That we're dropping C- a whole line of CBD skewers and a whole line of THC skewers. So, um, yeah, I mean, I have several different, um, and I'm to the point now where they're hopefully in the next six months, everything's going to really start turning over and it's going to be dope. So, um, but definitely what I'm most proudest about it is my kids, man, and, and getting a chance to just be the best dad. Cause like I said, like me and my dad are great now, but it took 27 years of my mom to die until we got to the point where right now that's my dog now, but I missed that first 27 years. So yeah. to me, like I just always told myself, man, if you ever get a chance to be a father, that's number one to me. So that shit came before anything else and will always come before anything else. Well, speaking of parenting, last question I'm going to ask you, since I did see you at D Wade and Gabrielle Union's event, with the whole thing that's going on with Dwayne Wade's son wanting to transition to be acknowledged as Zaya, 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 and Bootsy and all those people attacking what their choice is, what do you think about that? I think it's, it's disappointing. I think that our community overall is, is not very educated on the subject matter. At all. Um, first and foremost, I don't think that talking to Dwayne that he wanted his son to choose this path. You know what I mean? He, in his interview, you know, he said he had to really look at himself in the mirror and figure out who the fuck he was because he said his son knew who he was or who, who he, he calls his daughter now. She knew who she was. So some people are saying, and he said he started seeing signs at three years old. And I believe that because I've seen signs in kids yeah. four or five years old. Like you could just tell like there, it's it's different, you know, and it's not even different in a bad way. You just have to understand what that different is. So to me, at, you know, with this son, was he 12 now, 13? 12. Or daughter, excuse me. Um, to like, to what? What? What's the opposite? You're saying fuck this. I don't agree with you, and I'm just gonna disown you, and you might, you know, commit suicide or get on. You know, to me. So to me, they just took the only route. Now, like, regardless of whatever the fuck decisions you make, you're my child. I'm still gonna love you, and they're supporting you. And I'm sure there's other people doing what they're doing. They're just not in the public eye. Yeah. You know what I mean, so they're the first couple that has had to stand up and, and take this. And I think they've done a tremendous job. And like I said, I just don't think we're very educated. Everyone, well, he's, they're too soon to know what they want. But if you hear her talk, she knows exactly who the fuck she is. <laughs> right, right. Very intelligent, <laughs> right. very grown by, uh, beyond her years. So it's just like, who the fuck are we to say what she can do? And if, if, if her parents are good with it, what, who, who are we to say it's wrong. And the craziest part is when I when I saw Gabrielle at the party, I said, I just want to tell you, you and Dwayne are doing such an amazing thing for the LGBT oh, movement. Oh, they need it. Yeah. Because you've never seen an NBA star, a movie star, this famous, this public, publicly get behind, right. you know, somebody who's going through a really sensitive uh, time in their life. But, you know, the thing that's crazy is that the movie Pose, uh, the show Pose, and mm-hmm. all of what, you know, uh, Paris is burning... All that shows how many kids have been displaced by their parents because they came out yeah, right. and end up in the streets and bad things happen oh, to man. them. You don't know how many people DM me like, man, I'm going to use it. D- I-, I say Stephen A. Smith kind of got our buzz, but Dwayne Wade's interview put us on the map. Mm-hmm. And I got so much crazy Huge. positive feedback from that. Like, well, I'm going to use this to talk to my dad or my brother. My dad kicked my brother out. Maybe we can use this to sit down and bring our family together and talk. And like you said, it's That's needed. Mm-hmm. It- it- it's so needed, you know, and it's... I, I can't say enough good things about what they're doing and, and, and how they've really taken this stand because, like I said, it wasn't something, okay, I'm going to, you know, I want you to be a girl. Or, like, I don't know. Any dad can honestly say they want that to happen, but you got to face real shit when real shit happens. So he can't, like he said, he told me, he's like, man, I had to look in the mirror and find out who I was. But what I loved about um, speaking to Gabrielle, she said, we don't know everything, so if there's anything we're not doing right, tell us. Be open like, damn, That's dope. That's how real. could you not support that? Right. Plus, who the fuck wants to... Why are people bullying a 12-year-old? It's a kid. I don't know. It, this is a different space, but I appreciate And I do appreciate... You know our friendship because you know you know I'm gay as hell and you support me and you you tolerate me. <laughs> Jay's tried me a couple of times too. Like <laughs> no, I, no, I have not, not try me. Like, like this is try to get at me, story. but he tried to do some slick shit. Like you want? Remember when I moved to Memphis? This nigga's like, you want me to come out there and help? I'm like, help me, <laughs> come bro. out there. And help. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I got, I was, I got, I got gonna move a box I got, too. I got, I got movers. No, I'm sure? like, I'm like, are you bored? I mean, like as a friend, I would want to come and hang out with my friend. He's like, nah, nigga, it's a lot to do out here. I'm like, damn. But, uh, <laughs> want me to come out there but, and help. but you know, I was I was even playing with Nick Young the other day because we had posted this viral clip of this straight guy and a gay guy who mm-hmm. were best friends, and they were doing like a lot of what would be questionable shit. I go, hey Nick, me and you should do a video like this. He said, you know, I'm with the shit. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, Nick is cool, but to me, like people don't understand. Like when you look a certain like 
you're gay. This is like, it's just another form of racism. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why it bothers me, like, is being part of the black community because we're discriminated on so much yeah. already. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like I said, for him to like have to, it's already hard enough to be black here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, to add that on top of it, like, it's a tremendous, it's just a lot. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, it's a just lot like. It's fear too, though. Like, if you're we, not we, we, secure you fear, with your own you fear sexuality, what you, don't, you fear what you don't know. That too. You know what I mean? It's so, like, I'm, I'm supporting my man D and I'm in the comments arguing with people, like, oh, you must be. The, I'm just like, no, like, I, that's my homie and that's his his child. He's going to love his child regardless. I don't give a fuck what you guys yeah, say or think. Do with you. Like, I, come I on, agree man. with everything you said in this interview. I agree. You fear what you don't know and you yeah. should have let me come to Memphis. All right, listen, <laughs> all the smoke, go check it out showtime basketball congratulations YouTube. on everything appreciate and i appreciate you coming back no thank you Pat. come anytime yeah. thank you all right we're out of here peace peace what up youtube thank you for watching this reckless show yeah and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell and also don't forget to share and leave a comment because we are reading